All right. Well, welcome everyone. That means it means showtime. Um, so I have 20 minutes. Yeah, I have a lot of stuff to talk about. So I'm going to try to hit on um, all of the new products that I'm releasing with Ranger. If you have specific questions when I'm done, I'll hopefully have enough time to answer those because there's a lot of different ones. Uh, but first thing we'll talk about uh, what a lot of people are talking about, and that is the new Distress Crayons. This is a new medium to the Distress world. And what these are, it is a water reactive pigment, which means it is uh, not a wax crayon, it is not an oil pastel, it is a water reactive pigment. What I mean by that is that you can use them just like a crayon to create that really colorful sketchy look. You have the ability to watercolor with them because they're water reactive and you also have the ability to smudge them, smudge them with your finger. And these work on a variety of surfaces. Right now they are only available in 18 colors, they're sold in three packs with the hopes more. <laughs> with the hopes. I'm like, please, I want more. So let's talk about kind of the, the consistency of these guys. So these are incredibly creamy. They go on almost like a lipstick. They are not uh, waxy and sketchy. You can create that look if you go really fast, or you can create that opacity just by coloring these. And that's what's really different also from a watercolor aspect with these when I said they are water reactive. Usually if you're used to coloring with say a marker, when you put a marker on paper, our goal is to put less marker on the paper because we want to blend it out, correct? Well, if you do less crayon on the paper, you don't have as much blending pigment on there. But if you have something that's very solid, this is going to give us a much more smooth, consistent blend than a sketch. So a totally different way when we're coloring with these that we have that ability to either blend our pigment or create that scribble look. So let's talk about some different surfaces. If I'm working with this medium, I can work on a variety of surfaces. I can work on a craft surface. I can work on a dark surface because this is going to be a pigment. I'm still going to be able to see these. So unlike working with ink like a marker, you're only able to work on lighter surfaces. And this allows me to blend and manipulate my color on manila, on watercolor paper, on any of those, okay? But they're not really watercolor crayons. Their whole purpose was not just to watercolor, okay? But I wanted them to be water reactive. Meaning, if I wanted to still scribble on my craft sheet, I can use that as a palette that's never going to dry. I can pick up those colors and I can still apply those colors, right? But this surface on here, let me show you some of the, the features of it. If I want to combine colors, if I want to mix colors, I still have that blendability. I can take different colors, and I was kind of playing around with that here earlier, but I'll show you. I can take one of the colors, I can take another color, I can go right over the top of this, I'm not going to contaminate that at all. Now these crayons have a base that you can turn this to extend more of the material, so this base is filled with that material. And I wanted something that you can hold like a pen or a marker, because that's just how I want to work with them. When I go in with a water brush, or even just a paintbrush with water, I can pull out one of the pigments, I can pull out the other pigment, or if I go in between, I'm going to create that blend. So you do have the ability on your surfaces, if you want to color one color over the next, you can blend those pigments on there. Or I have the opportunity to layer the pigment. So for example, if I have something on here, and make sure this is dry, just because I want to dry that water that's on there. I do have the ability to highlight or accent a color, and I'll show you something on the collage medium as well. One of my favorite sets, the vintage set, contains Picket Fence. Now Picket Fence is going to allow you to still go over the top of that. So if I wanted to create that lighter, more soft pastel version, because this is a pigment, I can go right over that and soften that color down. And that's what we were doing on some of the collage. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the collage aspect too, and I'll jump back to crayons in just a minute. We have some new uh, Distress collage mediums, and what these are, I wanted to glue because I do a lot of uh, collage mixed media work. I wanted something that wasn't as wet as glue and seal. We've discontinued glue and seal, um, much to Wendy's dismay, but I found that it kind of warped paper a little bit. The viscosity of multimedium is still really great for 3D elements, but I found it was too thick when I was trying to spread it over a large surface for paper, and that was kind of the, the in-between of collage medium. Now, collage medium is in three different finishes. There's matte finish, which is just a complete matte finish. There's vintage. Vintage is just going to be that tinted medium. So you just use it as your regular medium, but when you put it over the top, everything is already vintage. So for people that don't know how much ink to add or what to do with that, it's a really easy way to create that vintage effect. And then my favorite, which is crazing. Now crazing is very different. It is not a crackle. It is a craze. 
So if you look at the detail of this, and I'll even pass this board around, you will see these really fine little crackles, which is referred to as crazing, what ceramics or porcelain do. We get those little crackles, but it's under that surface. So unlike rock candy crackle that is textural and really chunky, this is completely smooth. There's no texture because it's cracked under the surface. It also makes this a waterproof surface, okay? So it's still all those sealing properties that we have uh, with any sort of medium, it's going to be water-based yet waterproof. Another thing that is different than rock candy is this does not distort your image. If you see on the sample board when you guys are walking around, definitely check that out. When you apply rock candy crackle over an image, it cracks, but it also reflects and distorts what's underneath. This you can apply directly over a photo, any ephemera, and it doesn't distort any of the imagery. You just see those little cracks in there. And so what we've done with this one is after that uh, collage medium is dry, let's see if this one is dry yet. It's just about dry. I'll use my heat tool. All of the collage mediums, in addition to uh, the four ounce size, they're also available in a sampler pack where you get all three mediums in one pack. So you get a sampler. And we've also done this uh, in our texture paste for the show because we found a lot of people like, do I want matte texture paste or transparent? It's like, you know what, try the sampler. But for me, for someone that would, you know, take it to a workshop, I love the fact that I can take all three of these jars and I could refill them from the big ones, right? Because this is a lot in my bag. I'm not gonna use that much glue on a project. I might, but uh, I may not. So, I'll, and I'll talk real quick about the mediums before I go with the crayons. Another thing that I loved about working with these mediums is creating some brushes for them. So these are the collage medium brushes. This one, this one, and this one. Three sizes. Now what's cool about these is that this is um, a very soft brush. So I'll pass this around so you have to brush it on your hand to see. It's a soft brush but very springy. And I wanted that because I wanted the ability to brush a medium but also remove a medium. Okay? These are sold individually or in a set of three. So I'll pass it around here. Yeah, if you feel it on the top of your hand, you'll see exactly what I mean. What's cool about this, if I'm going to work with it, is that I can take my collage medium, the brush is designed to fit right into the jar, I can pick up my medium, and when I spread it out, I have the ability to either apply a heavy layer, I'll show you here, let's say it has some glue on there, but usually with a paintbrush, if you have too much glue and you try to scrape it off, you end up with that big channel of glue. Because the brush is too flat, it just pushes it to the side. This brush actually allows you to scrape it right off. So I can pick up as much medium as I want and put it back in the jar. So I really wanted something that was angled to fit in my hand just like this. So it's a real easy way to kind of like if you're doing wallpaper paints, you know, really go on there and spread out a lot of medium and really control how thick or thin that you get it. What I also like to tell people, I don't know if I have any ephemera, this will become ephemera. Um, collage medium, when you put something down, and we have a, a paper, I either use a dry paper towel or you can use a cloth when you're putting this on. This has a drying time of now. So when you put something on there, it's going to set this, well, not this one, because I have three layers on it. When you put this on, you're able to put another layer of ephemera directly over the top, and you can spread that right over the top of it. And you don't have to worry about each layer drying in between because nothing will affect the other layer. So you can put crazing on one layer, matte on one layer, vintage on another layer, and you don't have to worry about one overpowering the other. Another cool thing, these are all heat stable mediums. So unlike crackle paint that you have to wait before you can dry it, you can apply crazing medium, dry it with a heat tool, and it will craze right there. Okay, so let's show you the effect of that. One tip I always like to show people when you're using collage medium or any wet medium, when you're done with your brush, just wrap it in a baby wipe and then you won't have to clean it. You can keep it that way for hours. I mean, you have to clean it at the end of the day, let's be honest, but this way, if you're demoing or teaching or working on a project, don't always throw your brush into water. Okay, so this one we have applied um, some medium and what's interesting about crazing medium is you don't see it right away. You think, well, this just looks like glue, nothing really happened to it, but it does. So I'm gonna take some of the crayon just to create a highlight. I'm just gonna go right around the outer edge and you can do this with any color. And we can go in and smudge this, just smudging with our finger. I can add as much medium as I want, simply by smudging that. And you can see that I've got that great crazing effect, because you can see those crackles highlight. And I'll pass this around. You also have the ability to create highlights with your picket fence. So if I wanted to create kind of that oxide effect, I can go right over that brown to create those white highlights and I don't have to smudge that. And again, you're never gonna contaminate the crayon because it's just going to dispense that medium. Now let's say you didn't like something, for whatever reason, maybe you were applying this to a surface. Let me grab this one, this one's dry. Maybe you have some medium on a surface. 
because this one is done with uh, the matte collage medium. That's gonna give you a much longer smudge open time than just untreated paper. It's still smudgeable, but you can see the difference. This is gonna give you a much longer play because it's not porous, it's been sealed. So if you use this on gesso or uh, collage medium, you have a lot more open time. But one of the things I like about having a surface that has a medium on it first, let's take some colors. nice messy mud if I have color on there I can also go in with a stencil take one of this one's just the matte collage medium so I didn't I didn't want any texture on there didn't want any crazing or any pattern I just wanted something and that's just using the brush so it kind of gives you that kind of scratch effect so you can also create a linen if you take the brush and do a crosshatch but because you have that medium on there if you take any know any pattern you want. We'll take something pretty small. Let's do this guy. This is going to already be dry, so it's not going to keep wiping off or smudging, but it is water reactive. So you can take a baby wipe, you can take whatever, yeah. and you can go through that to create an effect. Simple. Yeah, yeah it's pretty cool. Yeah, that's really nice. It's just, it gives you a, a great effect right from the start so you don't it's I don't know it's just this crazy different medium but here's here's one of my favorite things because you know me when I create something new I'm never going to forget what I love the most that would be ink right so even though we have cool mediums where you're like oh, I've got water reactive pigments I can do all of that well it still needs to do something great with your distress inks because that's what we have so I'm just gonna dry this to make sure there's no water on here so water reactive and if I go in with a blending tool, pick up a little bit of foam. I can do this with Distress Ink, Distress Stain, Distress Paint, Distress any ink. If I go over the top, any place that is very heavy is going to immediately resist the color. We see that. But if I go over this with water, even though we said it's water reactive, that layer is not water reactive anymore because it's dry. So unless I smear it out, I am able to resist even where the watercolor is. You'll see that base color come to the surface. It's pretty crazy that when you're coloring on a surface, I was showing some people yesterday, because they're like, well, how reactive is it? Well, let's just take one of the crayons and let's just put it on the paper and let's spray it. You're gonna see that it doesn't react the way ink does. It doesn't wick. You're gonna think, oh, nothing happens. Sure, it'll happen as long as you touch it. So what I like is that it's a stable medium that I can work over the top. I don't, May's going, uh-huh. You know, when you use it, when the, she was part of the designer challenge, because when you put it on, you think, oh, I can't get it wet now. It's water reactive. It's distressed. It's going to go crazy. No, if you wet it, so if you accidentally wet it when you're doing another layer, it's not going to smear everywhere. It's just when you go and try to touch it um, while it's wet, it will move. But once it's dry, you can apply ink over it, stain over it, anything. And even your water colored area doesn't have to be so thick. will also resist it. So that's what's really cool about distressed crayons. A million and one uses. There's going to be more. All right, I have to move on to other products. So, other new things, I'll quickly jump around. New Distress Marker Storage Tin. Hold 70 markers. Even though there's only 61 colors, I wanted room in there that you could add a water brush or two. Of course, we know that the markers are supposed to be stored horizontal. That's why I did the little window. So when it's sitting on your shelf, you can see that there's markers. I prefer to color from can. So I like it sitting upright, but I know a lot of people like angled coloring as a palette. So the tin is also designed to be laid down. So it's going to provide that angle that you can pull colors from. So depending on how you like to color, that's why we designed an angled lid versus a straight on lid for that. So that's the marker storage tin. Some other new things. Um, we have new mixed media palettes in the archival line. So um, all of us as designers, we're all jealous of Wendy. No, we all like to use a waterproof ink for something, whether we're doing watercolor or stamping on paint or anything like that. So uh, Ranger has allowed us to create our own mixed media palette. So it's four individual colors of the archival formulation in each designer's palette. So my colors, I chose Hickory Smoke, Vintage Photo, Ground Espresso, and Black Soot. Dai, of course, has a vibrant palette. Dina has a palette that she wants to stamp in. So it's a really nice way to use archival in a different way. Now, if you're gonna work with this, I'll just tell you real quick, if you have uh, a stamp, thing. if you have a stamp that's going to go onto a block, you just have to remember to stick in your quadrant. So you have to kind of go like that, go like that, go like that, go like that. So hopefully this will be the catalyst of 
other archivals. I'm not sure. I hope it is. Um, another thing that I want to remind you of when you guys are walking around before you leave, definitely check out the swatch board for uh, the Distress Crayons because one of the key features besides that they work on papers, they also work great on metal. So you can color in your metals and they're going to dry on your metal. So any of your charms that you want to highlight and accent, you can easily fill in that detail of any of your charms and wipe it right off. And more importantly, they are stampable, meaning I can stamp on top of them, not with. That's the biggest difference, is that unlike other uh, pigments where you can color on to the stamp and missed it, these do not work that way. They do not. Because remember, I wanted them to, once they were dry, be able to ink over the top of so a different property. All right. Some other new surfaces, we also have uh, wood grain cardstock. This is a 111 pound cardstock that we can watercolor with a really cool wood grain texture, which means that I can apply paint and ink over the top or just regular ink to create some really cool effects. It's got a great texture, so I'll pass some pieces around. You can kind of scratch your nail over it to feel it. It's a beautiful, beautiful texture. Other exciting things, because now I have like three minutes. We did introduce the Picket Fence Distress Ink Pad. All last year, everyone was like, the new color's white, the new color's white. I'm like, but we already have white. We have white in a marker, a stain, a spray stain, and a paint, and a marker, so it wouldn't really be new. So we just needed the ink pad, and so we did. And what makes this different, this is still a felt pad. So I can stamp with this, I can blend with this, and it will react with water the same way Distress does. But the one thing, it is not a glycerin-based ink. So it's going to do all that cool wicking that Distress does, all that immediate blending, all that great stamping, but it's dry, even though it's a pigment. So you don't have to heat set it, you don't have to do anything with it. Yeah, and it's a felt pad, so it's not that squishy foam pad, which is what I really love. All right, some other things. We've done mini spray stains. That's new to the line. We've taken the stains. We've done, I know, cute factor. Uh, mini one ounce spray stain. We've done that just in 12 colors to see if people are going to have that same love as they did for the mini Distress inks. I know I will because when you start taking a lot of sprays in your bag, it's a lot, so little one ounce is very cute. And then one of our favorites are the mica sprays. So we were able to take our Perfect Pro Mist formulation because they discontinued Perfect Pro Mist, which we were all very sad. And we are like, but we, but I like these colors. And Wendy's like, but I like these colors. And we're like, okay, well each of you can pick your three. We'll tweak the colors to your palette and we'll put them in a smaller bottle and that's what these mica sprays are. So what these are, this is just going to be that uh, pigment without any colorant underneath. So when you put it on a surface, it's going to give you that pearlescent shimmer. The nice thing about the formulation of this, I think that we all like, Diane loves it, I love it, is because this does not react with any of our mediums. So even though Distress is very sensitive to water, if I have a Distress background, I can spray the mica spray over it and it will not re-wet my Distress ink. It will not re-wet dilutions, which are all very fugitive products that are super sensitive to moisture. That's what's great about this particular formulation is it's not just perfect pearls in water that we've done. This is a resin, so it really evaporates quickly. So we have uh, sets of three. So my set is Tarnished Brass, Antique Bronze. Did you pull them all out, Wendy? Thanks, right there. Look at that. Brush Pewter, Antique Bronze, and Tarnished Brass. So I've got like the, the grungy metals. Yeah, and I really love them. Because you can see as they dry, they just become even more and more sparkly. And you can hit this with a heat tool. So that's really one of the fun things. Um, let's see, anything else? We have new surfaces, alcohol and Gupa, which I'm not gonna be able to get into, but if you're here throughout the show, you've gotta check it out. If you're not familiar with Gupo, um, we have teamed up with Gupo, so it's legit. Oh yeah, uh, you and me both, but in the art world, it's pretty expensive because it's usually in giant sheets, giant pads, and I'm like, I don't think a card maker is gonna drop like 20 bucks for a pad of paper, but it's a synthetic paper, which means it's totally plastic. So when you use alcohol ink on this, all of the cool things that I did with like the archival resist and creating landscapes and all of that, that's what's brilliant about Yupo is it does not adhere or submerse into the surface. It will dry on the surface the same way it works on paper, but it will allow me to completely play, stamp, stencil, all of that. So if you have time uh, today or tomorrow, come by and watch the demos because it's awesome. It's available in white as well as translucent. So even though they look the same in the package, one is opaque, but I also wanted one that I could still color, but I would be able to put on a surface and see through it. Because I would love to do like, you know, vintage color alcohol inks and lay it over a photo and see a stamped image underneath it. So really excited about that. So there's just so many like crazy cool new things that we're doing in the Ranger world. It's only the beginning. You've got so many other designers to go and check out. So any questions before they shuffle you guys Actually, on? Actually, I had a whole list, but you answered 
answer these to them. Oh, so. good, good. Is, good there, is there any I didn't answer? I don't think so. Paint just the canvas. So what we've done, um, I just I believe that as an industry, we evolve, our creativity evolves, my styles evolve, and I was a huge fan of the dabbers, no doubt. When I was using them on foam stamps, painting edges of chipboard. I wanted that dabber top, but I think my creative styles have evolved as many have, where we're really embracing mixed media, painting journals and canvas and using baby wipes in our hands. And I found myself really not using the dabber as much. I was just pouncing the paint on just to get paint on my craft sheet. And I'm like, you know what, that dabber thing and uh, cost wise was a huge deal. We we're able to reduce the, the price of the paints. So we released just flip tops last year where people that had the dabbers could buy the flip tops and replace them. But I'm like, I just want to just make flip tops and sell the dabber as a replacement if they want to turn one into a dabber because it's going to reduce the cost and it's going to be easier. So this is the test of that theory because they they don't agree with me. He's right there, but they don't agree with me. They're like, I don't know. I love them. So the flip top, it's it's actually a design flip top. It's not just a regular one. Notice it's not flat on the top, so you're not going to get that ring of paint. It actually has a spout. The top stays open. So it's got that little spring. So when you flip it up, it's not going to flip open. The paint doesn't just pour out. You squeeze the bottle to dispense as much paint. When you let it go, it's done. It's a spout so it doesn't drip down the side. And it's got a plug here that when you close it, it goes right inside there and makes this completely leak proof. Nice. So it's not just a flip top. It's like a flip top that we need because distressed paint is incredibly fluid. So if it just had a hole there and you flipped it over, game on with the paint. So. I just think that I hope that all of our paints go to this. Thank you, Tim. He's like, please stop talking. And we also just make sure that. Be sure to like our video and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Scrap Time Videos, to be the first to see the latest videos from CHA 2016.